here, fellas. Brother Wright. Hello, Governor. <laughs> I, just, I just love the sound of that. <laughs> Who was that? <laughs> Thank you, Brother Steve, for your courtesy laugh. And, uh, honey, did you slip something in one of my drinks at lunch? I'm just I'm feeling real nice. Acts chapter 11, verse number 26. <laughs> hey, I just want to say, you know, we got a little basketball team they've been playing on Thursday nights over there at the gym. And this week, they played great. Now, they, they lost, but they did so much better than they have <laughs> at any time. In the second, now in the first half, they didn't score but 12. But in the second half, they scored 40 points against Mallow Parks and Recreation. And they got a, a guy on their team that's six foot ten. And, uh, man, just to score 40 points, period, against them. But, man, I'm proud of you guys. I said, so uh, uh, I bet y'all were surprised, or I bet the other team was surprised, weren't you? Danny was telling me. And he said, I think we all were. And, uh, man, so good job, guys. Keep it up. Before long, you'll, you'll be on television balling. Amen. Uh, Acts chapter 11, verse 26. And I've probably used this text several times. And I, I just kind of want to speak to you a little from my heart tonight, okay? And uh, it, it may not be... Uh, a sermon like I would normally preach. I don't know, it may turn into one, but I, I just want to speak to you from my heart on a topic of I want to be a Christian. And more than anything in my life, I just want to be a Christian. And uh, now there, there's many, uh, let, me, let me read first. When he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. So this is the first place they were called Christians. Uh, they were called Christians. Uh, it, nowadays, you can be called Christian for about anything. Uh, the people in the East, just because we're in America, they'll say, well, they're Christians because they're from America. It's not necessarily true. Some people are called Christians just because they go to church. Well, that person goes to church all the time. <laughs> they're a Christian. Uh, some are called Christian because they're kind. Uh, some are called Christian because, well, they hold a position in a church. Are you a Christian? Well, I'm, I'm the treasurer of our church. Are you a Christian? Well, I'm the deacon of our church. See, there's evidence that you're probably not a Christian right there, deacons. <laughs> nah. uh, uh, well, I've been teaching Sunday school, and, and we, we have all these definitions of what a Christian is. Now, they were called Christians first in Antioch. Was it because they was a Sunday school teacher? Uh, it, it wasn't because they went to church, although I believe they did. Some of them probably were Sunday school teachers. They were called Christians just simply because they behaved themselves like Jesus Christ. <clears throat> there are several types of believers. Now, when people ask me if I'm a Christian, most often I'll say, well, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a believer. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. I place my faith in Him. As to whether I'm a Christian or not, you ask my wife and children. That'd be for them to judge. I don't feel like I am now let me explain that I, I'm saved I'm on my way to heaven that word Christian to me well I have a hard time placing that label on myself because that word that it means Christ like little Christ now I know Ronnie wise you don't know Ronnie wise you think you do I know Ronnie wise often I, I, I fall way short of that mark but I tell you this the desire of my heart I want to be a Christian. You know, when, when I die and, and uh, uh, my children stand to say something about Dad, I, I, I hope they'll have something good to say, uh, but one thing I'd love for them to be able to say and mean it was this. My dad was a real Christian. Not just that my dad went to church and my dad was a pastor, but that my dad was a real, genuine Christian bonafide, through and through, Bible Christian. Now, I am a Baptist, and I'm proud of being a Baptist. Baptist by conviction. In other words, I, I hold to the fundamentals of, uh, of the Baptist doctrine. Now, there's a, a, a lot of different types of people out there that call themselves Baptists. I know of people that would uh, uh, say a preacher that's preaching has facial hair. Well, he's not a Baptist. Really, I've met some like that. That has nothing to do with it. And I'm proud to be a Baptist, okay? You understand me? That, that defines my doctrine, what I believe. But at the heart of it all, I really 
want to be a Christian. I, I want to be Christ like. I, I want to live my life in such a way, and I, I want to conduct myself in such a manner, and I, I, I want to just through and through from the very heart of me, I, I, I want to be Christ like. There's many types of believers, as I, as I said. Uh, <clears throat> listen to this in John 19, 38. And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews. Now, here's a man. He was a, a leader in his area. He was a disciple of Christ, but secretly. He didn't want to tell anybody. It was out of fear. Now, now let me say something here. I, I'm going to be a little bold in saying this. I can only think of two reasons why you will not tell somebody about Christ. Either you're scared to, or you don't care if they go to hell. Can anybody think of another reason? I mean, where it all boils down to it. We, we don't express our faith because we're scared of what somebody is going to say, or we really don't care. That's, that's, I mean, when it all boils down, that, maybe there are some other reasons we could come up with. Here we have Joseph of Arimathea. He was a disciple of Christ, but he was a secret disciple of Christ. He was a believer, but at this moment, I, I don't think I would say he was a Christian. You see, Christ was very open. <clears throat> Joseph of Arimathea, now let's look at the second part of that verse. What did he do? He besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. He came, therefore, and took the body of Jesus. At this moment, Joseph was no longer a secret disciple. At this moment, he, he, he goes to Pilate and says, Oh, I've been a disciple of Christ. I've been following, but I've been ashamed. I, I've been scared, and I've been one in secret. And, and so, I, I, man, I want to do something. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll get his body. I'll lay it in my tomb. I'm not just going to let him cast him aside and bury him out there in, in some peasant's field. I, I'm going to put him in my tomb. And he goes to Pilate. Pilate, listen, can I have the body? I've got a tomb. I want to bury him in my tomb. Now look, he goes. And he takes Christ off the cross. There's nothing secret about that. He went from being a secret disciple to saying, oh, boy, I, I, I believe this. I'm going to live this. I, I'm going to be a, an out-and-out -out Christian. But there are those that believers that are quiet and reserved. They keep their faith. To themselves they they believe in uh, uh, they they believe in, in showing their faith but not speaking their faith there are those who say and by the way I believe you ought to do both I believe you ought to show it and speak it <clears throat> there are those who say that sharing our faith is offensive they that, that it's harmful to the cause of Christ now all that is is just to cover up their fear or their callousness and they say that these are personal matters that should be kept between oneself and God. Well, that all sounds real good except for the fact that Christ commanded us to go into all the world. <clears throat> there are those who, who speak of faith. There's a kind of believer, they speak of their faith, but they don't live their faith. They publicly thank God while also publicly participating in things that are contrary to the Word of God. I, I admire Tim Tebow. I, I, I pray for him, really, because I know that Somebody's going to try to set him up. <clears throat> but he's not the first celebrity to come out and thank God. There's been many others, as a matter of fact. I remember as a youth pastor, sometimes teens would get convicted about the type of music they were listening to. They'd turn it into me, and I'd take those CDs, and I would open them up to the covers, and I would read some of the lyrics to the songs, and boy, I was blown away. Wow, I can't believe they allowed that, that stuff. Uh, vulgarities uh, 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 abundantly. <clears throat> and what amazed me is I would turn to a, a jacket where there would be a dedication or there would be some things that the artists, the singers, the rappers, whatever, what they said. And it amazed me that these lyrics over here, many times cursing God, speaking vile, vile profanities, and then over here they say, I just want to thank God for my talent. Now what do they do? They, they thank God. They're speaking it, but they're not living it. There are those who go into church on <clears throat> Sunday mornings and, and on special holidays and because of this, they call themselves a Christian. There are those who live moral lives and say they believe in God and that that makes them a Christian. 
But listen, church, that, that word Christian, it means more than I go to church on Sunday. It means more than I've got a good haircut. Hold on, I think a guy ought to have a good haircut. It means more than, uh, uh, well, I listen to the right kind of music. I, I think y'all listen to Christ-honoring music. That word Christian, it means that I am like Christ. If all of a sudden it became illegal to be a Christian, they came to your house and arrested you, took you to court for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? Would they be able to say, okay, you're the prosecuting attorney. What does the, uh, the prosecution say? Well, here's the, the, uh, uh, the evidence that we have to show that this person is a Christian. Or would they say, well, I mean, they, they, they went to church some. That's about it. I wonder if the defense could say, oh, no, look, we got you here. We can prove that they're really not a Christian. Would there be enough evidence to convict you of being a Christian? There are those like we find in Acts chapter 4, verse 13. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled, they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus they were they were very open about their faith they were bold about their faith they were death defying in their faith the world calls this kind fanatics the world calls this kind they say oh they're over the top the world uh, th there's a name for us a, a, a name a, um an ecclesiastical name, I guess you could say. They call us evangelicals. We like to spread, we evangelize. We tell people about Christ. I heard of a man who was uh, uh, um, uh, candidating for a church. The pulpit committee got him and they began to ask him questions and they found that this man was a soul winner and much of the direction he wanted to take the church was in reaching out and spreading the gospel and telling people how to be saved and they said to this man listen uh, we don't think you're a good fit you're too evangelical for us how can you be too out, uh, out and out about telling people about Christ there are actually preachers out there they don't even use the word evangelism now th this is believe it or not they, use, they say it this way. They say the E word. The E word? It's not a cuss word. Man, we're telling, it's being out and out about our faith. Listen, it is becoming, it is getting close enough to Christ that we become like him to the extent that he just radiates from us. Not just in our actions, but in our speech and in what we do and what we say. We're out and out about serving Christ. The world, the, or this kind, is an out and out Christian. They're not embarrassed about their faith in their God. They go as far as to share their faith with others. They're not afraid to wear their faith on their sleeve. They want to be like Christ. And, and by the way, most of them, I'm not talking about the self-righteous crowd. Now listen to me. I'm not talking about being self-righteous. Look, I am like Jesus. I'll be the first to admit to you, I'm not like Jesus, but I sure am wanting to become like him. And, and, and I hope that, uh, uh, that I, I believe that I'm closer to him now and maybe a little more like him now than I was last year or five years ago or ten years ago. I want to become more like, but I haven't arrived yet. And don't you ever get to thinking you've arrived. About the moment you think you've arrived, boy, that's called pride. And boy, that's welled up in you, and that's a sin. And uh, uh, pride goes before destruction. You be careful about that. If I want to be a Christian, and I've got to be like Christ. Now, I just have about five points here. This, these points no long, uh, not nowhere near as being an exhaustive list. I, I'm sure we could point out more attributes of Christ but here's just a few things number one these early Christians they were like Christ in that they loved each other listen to what it says John 13 1 
Now, there, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. The Bible says, Herein shall men know that you are my disciples, if ye have what? Love. One for the other. And that love is not just, uh, uh, Brother Nathan, stand up a minute. It's not just walking in church saying, hey, brother, I love you, brother. All right. And then I don't even talk to him for three more weeks. You, you can be seated. Thank you, Nathan. Hey, man, it's that. Man, you got burdens. I carry your burdens. You have heartaches. I, I carry those heartaches. You're rejoicing. Hey, I'm going to rejoice with you. They loved each other. Jesus he gets to the tomb of Lazarus. How did they know he loved Lazarus? He wept over him. Now there's a song, I don't know if it's true, I like thought, it says he didn't cry because Lazarus died. He cried because he's about to bring him back. I, I agree, Lazarus probably, I don't know, Lazarus probably sometime after that went to Jesus and said, look, why in the world did you do that, man? Things were so much better where I was. Had to bring me back here. Loved each other. Let me ask you something. Do you love your church family? Now, you think about it. Do you really love your church family? It's a shame that even amongst Christians, it's out of sight, out of mind. It's a shame. And that's part of the human nature in us, okay? I understand that. But do you want to become like Christ? We've got to learn to love each other, man. We've got to learn to, look, when somebody sins and they're destroying their life, why in the world is it that we look down our nose at them and we criticize them and we just run them down the road? It ought to break our heart. I want so bad to be a Christian. Hey, here's something else about Jesus. In John 5, 17, but Jesus answered them, My Father worketh hitherto, and I work. Jesus got the job done. The Bible says, if you could write down all the good things he did in that three year span, that the world could not contain the amount of books that it would take to write them. He went about, the Bible says, doing good. He worked. Listen, I can come to church on Sundays and sit down trusting Christ and be a believer. But if this is all I do on Sundays, if this is all I do, let me just not say just Sundays, because Sundays isn't the only day you serve God. Amen. I believe you ought to serve Him every day. If this is all I do as a Christian, then I'm not a Christian. Maybe I'm saved, but I'm not a Christian. You know what the Christian does? He looks for something to do. He doesn't have to wait for somebody to tell him. George saw a need. He filled it. You know what, George? You, you did a little bit something like Christ. That's probably the only thing you've done. Like, no, nah, I did something like Christ. George, they, they started coming some on Thursday nights. Summertime will get here. Brother Billy and, and Brother Danny be out there cutting the grass. Well, I think they ought to soul win. I think they ought to too. Hey, they're doing something. And I, by the way, I think they do share their faith. I believe they do. Uh, they, they've come to I know Brother Billy came to me recently talking about one of the men at work. Hey, will you pray for him? And he's talked to him some. Danny's talked to me about people he's talked to at work and over lines of business. Hey, listen, that's great. Do something. Brother Thomas, how old are you? Yes, sir. 75. Married that 45-year-old lady sitting next to you. Hey, you know what, Brother Thomas and Miss Thomas on Saturday morning? You know where they've been the past few Saturday mornings at 10 o'clock? Right here. Hey, hey, you got somebody I can go visit? 75 years old. Doing something. <laughs> he said, don't make it so bad, preacher. <laughs> I'm sorry, brother. I didn't mean it that way. I told you I'm not a good Christian, brother. 
did something for Christ. Brother Thomas back there. Hey, listen, I probably don't realize what a mess he is in. I probably don't realize to the full extent. Got say now he's serving as an usher. His wife working back in the nursery. Wife, she uh, had that one of the fellowship meetings recently. They come and said, "Hey, uh, we need to cook something and bring it." She cooked something and brought it. And somebody told me that she's going to start cooking a, and every Sunday bring something to the preacher to eat banana pudding. No, I'm kidding, sister. God probably wouldn't be mad at you, though. No, I'm kidding. And if I want to be a Christian, now you can be a believer. You can go to heaven all you want to sitting right there on that pew. Folks, that's not a Christian. Hey, look, I, I bow over the years. Uh, this is not to toot my horn because I've not done enough. I, this won't make sense to some of you. Some of you will understand. I've done so much that actually it, it made me sometimes do very little. I don't know if, that, if you understand that or not. Get involved doing so many different things, I, I couldn't do one thing right. <clears throat> I, I, I get caught up in that real easy. I'm, I'm, I'm a workaholic, okay? I, 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 that's all I know to do. I'll take on more things than I, I can handle. I'll, I'll about burn myself out. Matter of fact, I could use some help right now. Oh, I, I love my route. I don't want to give my route up, but really, folks, I, I kind of I need somebody to take that route. I, I could use that help. There's an opportunity for you right there. That route I have just in town, I, I leave here at 9.15. I'm back by 9.45. It's just right there in town. Hey, somebody love those people. Somebody could take that route and really build it. I, I, I don't have, I, I, I'm doing so much, I, I can't build it like I'd like to. And, I, and uh, I, I don't have a helper. That's one reason I can't build it. I don't have somebody on there with me. Wednesday nights, I'll put 25 kids on there sometimes. My brother Barry's jumped, stepped up, and he helps. We split the route. But you've got 25 on there, and ain't nobody helping you but GL, and all he's wanting to do is, is eat a Twinkie. No, I'm kidding, brother GL. <laughs> I can't believe I said that. Where did that come from? Hush up back there. <laughs> Lord have mercy on me. Hey, look. Christ worked. He worked. He got sweaty. Made me sick one time when he was having a bus meeting. There's this pretty boy done working a bus, which I was glad he was working a bus. But he's one of those that would kind of talk just you know a little bit, a little bit like this, just a little bit, and he used his hands to talk. Okay, children, let me get your attention. Let's sing. kind of pretty he got to work on a bus which is a great thing but here, here's what he said in a bus meeting he raised his hand the, the bus captain said the bus director said got any questions yeah go ahead well listen we need to do something about these buses because I keep ruining my shirts and they're about $60 a piece and it gets very sweaty on that bus and I have gotten some dirt on there look I know bus workers that rolled in with vomit on their suit you got a little bit of dirt here's here's the solution wear a five dollar shirt like the rest of us man most bus work this guy would come in looking like gq man most bus workers i knew came in with two different colored socks on man that's sweaty if you if you came in and you weren't sweating during the summer something was wrong. if you weren't sweating during the spring or fall something was wrong hey at our church if you weren't sweating a little in the winter something was wrong you weren't working that bus do something. Look, you can do something. I want to be a Christian. I've got to learn to love like Christ loved. I'm going to have to learn to work like He worked. Luke 22 32, he said to Peter, He said, But I have prayed for thee. If I want to be a Christian, then I've got to learn to pray. I'm not talking about just throwing these little haphazard things up. Well, you know, God bless his food. Amen. 
God, help me on this test I didn't study for. Amen. Yeah, you prayed a bunch of those, didn't you, Danny? I know I did. I remember one time in college, I prayed, God, if you'd help me make a D on this literature exam, I'll be happy. I hated literature. He prayed. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He prayed. He got alone with God in the garden in the wee hours of the morning. He, he departed into the mountain alone and prayed. Listen, he got alone with God. If I want to be a Christian, then I've got to be close to Christ because it's only in being close to Christ that I can learn to become like Him. Look, you can come in here, sit down, and, and slump down the pew or throw your arm up on the pew and, and, and cross your legs and be a believer, but that don't make you a Christian. I know you're walking with God. Hey, I'm glad you come, but did you know coming and sitting on a pew don't impress God? That don't impress him. Wow, look. Hey, heaven, stop everything. Nathan's sitting on a pew. Let's look at him. Man, the angels, they, they put down their harps and all the, the embattlements of heaven. They got, oh, wow. Son. I tell you what impresses God is when we get along with him and we say, hey, God, I just want you to know, I love you. God, I want to serve you. I'm not worthy. I want to serve you, though. and I want to be like Christ. If you'll help me, please help me. I want to be like Christ. I've got to learn to love. I've got to learn to work and get the job done that I'm supposed to be doing. And I've got to learn to pray. And They openly told people about their faith. Jesus said this in 1820 of, of the book of John. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple whither the Jews always resort and in secret have I said nothing. He said, hey, I was open about it. You ask those people that heard me what I said. You're asking me, ask them. I didn't hide it. I didn't say this thing in a corner. I, I spoke it out in the synagogues where people were. I talking to some uh, uh, Sasha and Mr. Kennedy on the way in. And, uh, um, uh, uh, there's a guy, Skip Bayless, on um, Sports Center. I was watching a little clip of him defending Tim Tebow, and uh, a couple of football players that professed to be Christians were saying a, a, kind of a criticism against Tim Tebow. What they were saying is, <clears throat> they were saying this: he he's over the top. He's too out and out about his Christianity. He shouldn't be praying out on the field. He should gather somewhere, somewhere else to do that. No, listen, folks. You read this book. Every disciple except one, I believe, lost their life because they were out and out about what they believed. Hey, read the history books. Read them. Those who were true Christians, many of them, they died for their, what they believed. They didn't hide it. Weren't ashamed of it. They were out and out about it. I can't say anything at work. Yeah, you can. There's ways to do it. You just got to want to. Hey, uh, they ask you, all they got to do, like I've told you before, all they got to do is say, how's your day? Well, let me tell you, I'm glad you had Jesus is good to me today. Matter of fact, he's good to me yesterday. He didn't ask me how I was doing yesterday. Let me just tell you, he is good to me then too. And by the way, he'll be good to me tomorrow. He'd be good to you too if you let him. Told others about the faith. Acts 5.42 And daily in the temple and in every house they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Let me ask you something, church family. So far, how are you measuring up? Are you a Christian? Are you even heading that direction? Let, let me stop with this last one. Matthew chapter 3, verse 17. We hear God the Father say something about Jesus. He said, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. We see that there's, we have an opportunity to one day stand before God and him say this, well done, thou good and faithful servant. He pleased the Father. You realize that Jesus didn't please everybody. 
He didn't please those Jewish religious leaders. He didn't please them. He didn't please many of the Romans. He didn't please the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And, and he, he didn't please the scribes. But he pleased God. I hope one day to stand before God, Brother Worley, hear those words, well done. Johnny Wise, I'm so pleased with you. I don't, I don't, deserve, those, I don't deserve those words, but I hope so badly. I, I want so badly to please him. You know, I may not please you. I, I want to because I love you. But ultimately, I've got to please him. You know, there's people in this community, I, I, I think I'm well-liked in the community, I, as far as I know I am, but I know there's some that think I'm a nut. Uh, they think I'm crazy. I know that. When I first came here in my, in my zeal, I'd be, I just think every preacher's like I am, I guess, and there's a couple preachers here in town, good men, but I'd say to them stuff like, man, I tell you what, I'm just wanting to just be used of God. I want us to set this town on fire. I thought... You know, we, we work together, man. We'll set the town on fire. So, man, I, 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 want, I want so many people getting saved that the drug dealers and the, the bartenders call me mad because we're hurting their business. I didn't realize they were customers. I'm serious. I didn't realize they didn't have a problem with it. And at first when I say, I just want to be used to God, they're like, yeah, yeah. And then I'd say that and they'd be like, Pursed her lips together and just shake her head. I didn't think nothing of it until later on I found out. Now, I, I might not please them. I sure want to please God. Look here, church. You want to be a Christian, don't, don't try to please me. It, it, it really don't matter a whole lot if you please me. Please God. Please God. Listen, every... If you've been a mature Christian, you, you've grown for a while and, and the Lord and you've matured as a Christian, these younger Christians, don't get them to thinking they have to live up to your standard and please you. Man, point them to God. So don't use me as the standard. Let's use him as the standard. You, you grow. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. Let's please. Let's please the Father. In the book of Acts, it says that in Antioch, they were called Christians. They were called Christians not because they wore a tie and had a short haircut. Although I, I think that's great. I like, I like men to have a short haircut. The Bible teaches you all to look like a man. If you're a man or a lady, you all to look like a lady. I mean, if, look, I don't want nobody coming up behind me and saying, and then walking by and saying, oh, that's a guy. I want them to know I'm a man. More than anything, though, I want them to know I'm a Christian. Let me ask you something, church, and I'm just talking to you tonight from my heart. Are you a Christian? Are you really Christ-like? Are you striving to become Christ-like? Is that your goal? Overarching goal in life. This is it right here, this big goal, to be like Jesus. We used to sing a song at the youth choir back home that went something like, To be like Jesus, to be like Him, to be like Jesus. I forget the rest of it. But that was a good part right there. <laughs> I knew it before I started singing it. To be like Jesus. Sorry, I want to be a Christian church. How about you? Everybody bow your head and close your eyes, please.